we're here with Dr. Jonathan Tarbox. He is the Director of Research and Development at the Center for Autism and Related Disorders, and you are also the Director of the Autism Research Group. Correct. Okay, so uh, we were just talking during the break, and I wanted to talk a little bit about, we've had some questions about perseveration in a lot of different contexts. Sometimes mm-hmm. our kids will perseverate on something, something they just can't let go. But we also had a question that came in last week from an adult on the autism spectrum talking about when we perseverate on a person and how sometimes that's detrimental to a friendship or to a relationship um, and when things don't work out if you know I, I know that I've got a child who's about to be a teenager in a couple of years mm-hmm. and I and I know how that romantic thing goes and when it doesn't work out how do how do we help individuals on the spectrum uh, to not perseverate on something what can right. we do and, and and in both ends of the context with the kids and with the help us help right. me <laughs> well first of all um, I'd say that's a very challenging topic and yeah. so anytime you're dealing with uh, sort of more automatically reinforced or self stimulatory behaviors quite frankly it's just harder than other challenging okay. behaviors um, and so you know um, it could be minor stuff like a child sort of talking about the same cartoon character over and over and over and that's all he wants to talk about and that's only the only thing he wants to play with is toys related to that cartoon or it could be all the way up to you know uh, a teenager or adult on the spectrum um, texting a friend too much you yeah. know or or facebooking a friend too frequently yeah. or or a, you know a love interest a date or something like that um, and you know the same basic rules that apply to you or me apply to folks on the spectrum too. So if you do something way too much, it's annoying. People aren't going to like it. And yeah. if you keep doing it, they're not going to want to be around you anymore. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, um, typically developing teenagers learn this. Like, you know, when you first meet a new girl, let's say, and you text her a message or something like that, how many times do you want to text her? Maybe a hundred, right? How many times should you actually do that per day in mm-hmm. order to maintain that relationship or cultivate that relationship? I don't know, maybe a couple or three, you know? And certainly once you text someone, and they don't respond, that's probably time to stop for the day, right? right. Um, unfortunately, there aren't any hard and fast rules. You know, social interactions are so complex it's and so hard. subtle, right? And just sort of the tone or color of it can change the whole meaning of it for, you know, for people. Well, so, and even how technology changes, because when you were right. saying to me, texting somebody three times a day, and to me, this seems like crazy. That's right. <laughs> like, because I'm not a big texter. Right. Uh, so I don't even know the context of those kinds of things. And I know a lot of parents yeah. out there say, I, I don't know what the teenage rules for that yeah. kind of thing are. And, you know, I'd say we're probably not, we're not necessarily, at least my team, are not necessarily experts in this, but we've been talking about maybe writing a book or actually yeah. a book is too outdated now. Maybe it'd be a blog or, a, you know, an e-book or something like that, or maybe an app, an iPhone right, app. An app. Um, there that, we go. It gives basic rules. Like, right. here's some basic rules to follow. It wouldn't be black and white, but it could be simple stuff. Like, right. if you've sent one text or one email, and they haven't responded, send one more the next day. If they haven't responded again, just stop, move on. Right. Um, you know, if I think we could all use this, Jonathan, well, not yeah, just individuals well, on the spectrum. That's we exactly could all use right. this. We could all use it. And it just it turns out that some of us are much more effective socially and much more yeah. powerful socially yeah. and, and are just good at things like dating or making friends or public speaking or these types of things. Mm-hmm. And others of us aren't. Some of us are horrible at it, even yeah. if we're typically developing, you know. Right. Um, and then, of course, the reality is somewhere in between between probably right. for most of us but yeah. but uh, but yeah I think everyone c- could use some more of this but okay so to that this is all very helpful uh, you need to make an I don't know about helpful but yes, yeah it is. <laughs> we need to. Um, so but in particular for the one person who wrote in who it was perseveration of thought thinking mm-hmm. of somebody that the friendship is already over mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. things happened and it didn't work out um, and they were looking at proactively changing things in the future but right. when there's a thought mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. keeps coming over and over and over is there something that we could do as a parent or as a friend or as the person experiencing ourselves to make mm-hmm. that stop? Well, no, you can't. Um, okay. And, and that, that's one thing we know about uh, obsessive thoughts is you can't make them go away because the harder you make them go away, what are you doing? You're doing Calling it. Calling attention right? to it. You're yeah. thinking about yeah, your yeah, obsessive yeah. thoughts. That is the problem. So okay. the harder you try to make your obsessive thoughts go away, the more they're staying. Um, okay. So you, you might as well give up. On, on try, really, <laughs> okay. honestly, give up. Okay. I'm him try All to go right. away. Well, that's how. Um, and instead, uh, uh, you know, a different way of, of thinking about it that you can do in addition to obsessing, because if you're going to obsess, you're going to obsess. You okay. can't stop. In addition to that, you can think about thoughts as something that you do. They're a behavior okay. that you engage in. And that's definitely one thing you can do, right? Okay. But that doesn't cause you to do anything else. It, it kind of seems like it does, right? Like if I'm thinking about calling this person so much, I have to just call him to get it over with. Right. Well, no, you could actually just think about it a lot. You don't have to do that other 
outward behavior that you think your thoughts are causing. Okay. You can, you know, so but you don't thinking. have to. Okay. It's thinking is just another thing to do. So instead of, or in addition to those obsessive thoughts, it's good, it's helpful to identify other things to do that okay. lead towards valued outcomes for you. All right. So um, exercise is another great example. What most of us do is worry about or think about how much we're gonna exercise or think about excuses to not exercise or think about oh, why, sweet. right, it's me too, it's everybody, <laughs> right? Well, it turns out what works a lot better is Take value, take action towards valued outcomes. Say, okay. well, okay, I could worry about it, or I could just go do it. You okay. know, or make a plan. Like, uh, you know, I could obsess about this girl, you know, all night, and you know, fine. In addition to that, I could go to the library and check out a book that I like. Or in addition to that, I could go watch a show that I like. Or I could go for a bike ride. I mean. Pick something else that matters to you and do it. You know what I like about this is that it's not in, it being in denial. It's because right, no. so often people say, "Well, stop it." You can't stop. And this it. is exactly what I experience with my child. Right. That sometimes I revert into before I ever knew about ABA, and he'll be doing something, and I'll say, "Stop that!" And I'm talking to <laughs> stop that. Talking to him, stop, yeah. would you stop doing that? And I want to find all the different ways that I can say, "Knock that off," mm -hmm, "Stop it," mm -hmm. even to the point where if he's kicking something, where I touch his leg instead of giving him something else to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That I, I'm not really going to get him to stop right. kicking his leg. Not necessarily. But yeah. I can get him to do something, something else. else. Right. And you know, here's another thing to consider too: is for fo for folks who are already like hyper self aware and obsessing about their own self and their own behavior, this wouldn't apply. But for younger kids who um, are perseverating a lot or engaging in a lot of repetitive behavior mm -hmm. that's causing problems for them, and they're not necessarily aware of it, that's something you can teach them to do in itself. It's called uh, self monitoring or mm -hmm. self recording or self observation. Okay. And so that can be helpful to to teach a child, here, look, here's the thing that you're doing that's making it hard for you to, you know, have friends or whatever, or make friends. Here's what it looks like. And it's okay to videotape it and review yeah. the videotape and practice acting it out, you know? And, yeah. uh, you know, you don't want to stigmatize it. You don't want to make it a big negative thing, right. but it is okay to teach the child to be aware of what they're doing. Um, and then um, help the child make a plan for how much they want to do it. So. Love you know, I'm not going to make my, you know, stimmy behavior go away 100%, but how about I plan to do it in the bathroom when I'm by myself? Right. Or I plan to do it in the bedroom when I'm by myself. Or right. I get to do it three times and then I'm not for the rest of the day. Or, you know, something That's like wonderful. that. But, but it, again, it comes back to, instead of just stop it, stop it, stop it, it comes back to making a plan for something else to do. Wonderful. So some great ideas for perseveration, at least to give us an understanding. And, and instead of having this futile thing of how do we stop it, accepting it, and finding other other things to do as well. Right. Love it.